know we'll have people probably coming in in a minute here too, but we'll go ahead and get started because we've got some good information to go over tonight in regards to uh, wave season. So we'll open up as usual with testimonies between now and our last session, which was uh, last Thursday. I know we've been talking about wave season for the past probably month and a half now. But if anybody wants to share any uh, new clients, anything you've experienced, uh, fam trips, site inspections, any meetings, I, I know it's a lot of meetings going on now. So just uh, unmute yourself. Good evening, everybody. This is Javonda. Hey, Javonda, how you doing? I'm okay. Um, well, busy, busy, busy. One um, group, bachelor and bachelorette group went off today on a cruise. Thank you, Jesus. Got another group going out next week. Thank you, Lord. That was another big one. And then I got a Vegas going out tomorrow night. So I am tired. Those three groups work a sister. But I did the 31st Black Heritage Festival uh, last weekend, and it was amazing. I got a lot of new great leads and hits. Um, a lot of material went out. That was wonderful. Um, now I got another, someone saw me, and it was like, hey, hey, can you come do a vending booth at mine? And I'm like, uh, sure, no problem. So. I am getting a lot of that where a lot of people is asking, can I come be a vendor at their event? Um, I don't know who all up in Atlanta. Uh, one lady, she was like, can you come and do Juneteenth? That's not, I, I'm not going to do that. So I'm not sure if anybody want to do a vending booth there for that event. If so, I have the young lady's contact information. I'll be glad to share it to anyone if anyone um, interested in doing a vending booth. Um, new clients, I do have a couple of more cruises came in, so you know me, I'm being a cruise girl, so that's what Classy Lens Travel is all about lately. Good stuff, good stuff. Javon, do you, um, so you've set up a vendor table before, right? Oh yeah, many a time, yes. So that's pretty much where you got the lead for them to invite you back out, or? Well, yep. A lot of um, one young lady um, that's doing a new one. She saw me at another event and she walked up to me and she was like, you know, I see you. You do a lot of vended. And I was like, yes. So she wanted me to come to her event and that's next Thursday night. So that's, you know, that'll be pushing it. I'll be getting off from work. Truck will already be loaded head to the event set up and go from there. And another exciting thing is I caught some magazine racks on Facebook sale. So now I'm able to, I have magazine racks at every event I go to. So that's a good plus because it helped at the 31st at the annual last week. Good. Wow. Yeah, that's good. And it keeps you in front of people too. You know, a lot of people see your stuff. And um, like you said, you just never know who's watching. And you just keep up that professionalism and always stay ready. You're going to get so busy where you're going to have to give that travel to me, okay? I promise I will. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Well, I got a, I got a complication. Um, I, I had a client. Well, I have a client. She booked a non-refundable room with um, World Agent, and her name isn't on the room. They were trying to do the thing where they try to cram three or four people in the room, and one of the people isn't answering her phone calls, and they cannot get inside that room unless that young lady is there, and that's unfortunate. So I got to figure out how to get them in that room if that young lady is not there. Oh my God. It's groups, you know, um, they want to go the um, best price. But I explained that to them when she booked it, like you can't make any changes. Are you sure they're going? Yeah, I'm sure. And you know, I got the, um, the drama behind it, which I like to stay out of. I don't know them personally, but I know them because they've done a lot of business with me. 
So I'm going to make sure I'm able to help them the best I can. So the, the organizer of the trip canceled? No. So basically, they're going to what's Mardi Gras. And they want to do, we put two names on the room, but they're going to put four people in there. Um, so we put the names on the room. She didn't want to put her name on the room and she was paying for it. And she said she don't know if she may go. And now it's coming back to bite her because the girl name she put on the room is some drama. I can hear it. I can sense it in a, some of the things she said to me. Like she always does this. I'm like, if she always does this, why you put a name on the room? So um, we just got to get it figured out. I don't want to be the why you did this and why you did that kind of person. That's not going to fix the situation. So um, I'm going to do what I can to get it taken care of. Because it is a non-refundable room. And it was like $160 cheaper than the refundable room, you know, that you can book. And you are dealing with a high, high level event where you're going to have people, a lot of people there. So they want to make sure you come to that room. That's why they made it non-refundable versus booking a room and not show up. And that room just goes unpaid for it and you got your money back. I try not to do non-refundable rooms myself. Yeah, because of uh, issues with cancellation. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And you know how people feel about travel insurance. So that's that's a, a travel insurance. I, I forgot to say this. I did lose. I got a group of thirteen going to yeah. Vegas. <laughs> so what are the persons she called me she was like oh i got a new business so i'm gonna have to back out would that affect my group i was like nope it won't affect your group because you and your other person is going in the room by yourself so thank you jesus we did get travel insurance but the funny thing about it is her daughter wanted to say well can i take her four hundred dollars and put it on my i'm like no y'all was not in the same room so yeah travel insurance travel insurance travel insurance <laughs> Yeah, they got insurance on them cell phones, but it's just unfortunate they don't see the value of getting insurance on the trip. Anyone else? Yeah, definitely must. We got it. Yeah, we got a few more minutes. You have to share your personal experience with when it comes to travel insurance, um, and that's how I pretty much sell on all the the trips that I book. Is is selling travel insurance. That's how I'm able to sell the travel insurance. What do you tell them, Tasha? So I just, I mean, my real life experience, um, Nikki and I were supposed to meet in New York, October, I want to say 2016. Um, for Halloween weekend. I mean, geez, you got to tell everybody. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> But, and I had booked my flight and um, had booked the room. We had booked the rooms and my uncle passed away. And so I wasn't able to go. And um, because I had travel insurance, I was able to get my money back for my flight. Um, so it's basically just sharing with them anything can happen. Um, any unforeseen thing can happen. And so just put yourself in a position where here it is, you're forking out anywhere from $500 to $1,500 on a trip. And something happens and you're not able to get any of that money back. That's a loss that you're taking. So that's pretty much what I share. I share my own personal experience with them um, to just kind of get their wheels going and to get them thinking about, well, you, you know, you're right. Something could happen. And it's commissionable. That too. But then the other thing is um, I'll also share with them if they get travel insurance, um, sometimes their deposits are cheaper than if they didn't have insurance. I didn't even know that. Mm -hmm. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. Sometimes it's a reduced deposit. Yeah. And I'll say this on um, concerning the travel insurance. Our insurances that we have here in America that we might have with our jobs, they don't cover you when you go international. So mm -hmm. you go international, something happens to you, you're going to have to come out of pocket. 
I just heard, um, I was at a travel conference this time last week, and um, there I heard two stories of where one was an agent, something happened, I think she sprained her ankle, $80,000 that she had to come out of pocket. Another person, I think, was like $45,000 for something that happened. So getting that travel insurance, there is a caveat to where it does cover you medically when you go out of the country. And these people can hold you hostage. Like, they can hold you in their hospitals until they get their money. Um, I do know, I did hear of an experience where um, somebody did go internationally. Something happened to them. They were in the hospital for a while. Because they had travel insurance, they were able to have their spouse to fly in and be with them and then eventually to the point to where they can send them back to the U.S. to get the pro other proper treatment and care that they needed. So that's what I tell my clients, like your insurance here does not cover you when you go international. So if you get the travel insurance or even, you know, looking at the travel insurance option, there is where it will cover you medically. And, and once you educate someone, um, it makes it easier for them to make a decision because you you want to make an educated decision based upon this travel insurance. I mean, we could talk about travel insurance. My brother broke his leg on a cruise being evil can evil. And um, yeah, they called me to ask me for money. I just was glad he was okay. But I reluctant to give it to him. Like, why you don't have travel insurance? Dude, you're a travel agent. But, you know, it ended up costing because the cruise ship left them. And, um, they had to pay for a single cruise the next day. The x-rays, x-rays don't cost co-pays, you know, <laughs> gonna be a little bit more, but yeah, that travel protection, um, yeah, educating people is, is, is always good. And that's unfortunate that my client opted out, but you know, I'm going, I'm going to help out. Well, I'm going to try to come through like Michael Jordan. Anyone else? Me, me, me. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so, okay, well, I'm, I'm still at the school, um, but Monday I started in a new department. I think this is the fourth department I've been in since I've been at Kentucky State, but it's fine. Um, the group that I'm in now, or the department I'm in now, um, the people are phenomenal. Um, they have me laughing every day. Um, but they've kind of gotten me to run in my mouth. And so um, in talking, um, a lot of the gentlemen in the department are Kappas. And um, I just happened to share with one of them that I'm putting a cruise together for um, a, a group of Kappas out of Jackson State who's celebrating their 40th next year. And, um, and share with him, you know, just kind of some of the details that we were, you know, he kind of discussed as far as uh, with that I discussed with my client as far as putting this together for them. And he was like, well, you know what, I think it's our, it's our 40th next year, too. He said, let me talk to some of the guys um, and see if they would want to do something, too. I said, well, y'all all can go together and, you know, meet, you know, your other frat brothers and celebrate it together. Um, you know, just bringing Kentucky State and Jackson State together. And he was like, that's a really good idea. So I've picked up another set of Kappas. Um, we're just kind of seeing if the dates would work. The dates that the preview, the my first client has set will work for this set. If not, then um, we're going to put together another, um, another cruise for them for next year. Um, and then... Um, one of the directors he's going to africa in may but he's also looking to um he loves cruises so he's looking on doing a huge family cruise for christmas so um we're meeting tomorrow to discuss that um you know as far as getting details and all that from him tomorrow so that i could start putting that together and thirdly um i got another I've got additions to my girls trip because somebody um, forced me to post. Um, they talked about me to me and um, said I had gone back into silent 
travel agent mode and I needed to post something. So I shared this morning um, pictures from one of the resorts that we were looking at for our girls trip in July. And um, I've gotten three, three individuals that are interested in that particular mm -hmm. trip. And then I've got two more um, that are interested in another trip. And then I got one that's from another network marketing company um, that is um, one of the top earners in that company who's wanting me to help put the, together a trip for her and her family to the resort that I posted on online this morning. I be listening to y'all. Congratulations. Shane, yeah, Shane. definitely. Congrats. Congrats. Shane. I told I'm Congratulations, to Tasha. I'm, thank you. I'm trying to catch up with Maurice. I'm trying to catch up with Jamal. I'm trying to catch up with um Javonda and <laughs> Jolyn and Alyssa. I'm and oh, and don't forget Nikki. But I'm trying to catch up with them. I want to be just like you. <laughs> That was an awesome post, by the way. You're a great. Thank you. You're but smart. I learned it from I learned it from the great people, the the uh, Maurice and Jamal show. Jamal show. <laughs> <laughs> but not congrats. So um, is eight fifteen? Yeah, eight fifteen. So we'll go ahead and get started. So tonight, it, how's everybody's wave season going? So far, I know Javon just here, Tasha's here. Not good. Mine is great. I am riding waves. <laughs> have Have you found it to be your your little more busy now? The past month, are you seeing a lot more people planning? You know, planning travel. I do. I will say that I am getting busier um, with the uh, wave season and using all the tips that y'all said and me boosting those posts. I'm getting a lot more inquiries, and now that I have the attention, it's now it's time to just reel them in and keep them engaged. Right, right, right. Start, you know, throwing stuff out there, and well, you know, quality stuff for people. All right, ready, ready, Jamal. Just rock and roll, man. Well, you know, we we are focusing more on on wave right now since, you know, this pretty much is a busy time for a lot of us. Um, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I had no idea that you travel agents or travel advisors, whatever we calling ourselves these days. Um, th this was a real busy time for you guys because I, I I never really focused more on travel like I have now. Um, but I, I like it. But, you know, one thing I will say about business, it will expose you, you know, your flaws, your strengths as well. Um, but, you know, Maurice, I, I will say this, you know, and, and maybe some other of you, others of you as well. I don't, I don't talk to you as much. I talk to him. Um, just, just getting um, acclimated with the whole travel industry. Cause sometimes, we can get involved in the business, but the business is really not in us. And, and that can show in, 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 in your results. So, you know, we want to just always put our neck in the road and, and, and look for things that can help. So one of the things we came up with, and we was going to talk about it last week, but I got on the rant. Y'all let me go on the rant. I don't blame y'all for that. Um, <laughs> you know, you, you got to be effective. And one of the things to be more effective in your business is efficiency and you know you want to automate your work processes does anybody have any automation going on in their business anyone yes yes what do you use hello i can't really say but yes i do use automation she uses automation and does it help with your business Yes, it does. Okay. Yeah, got you. So, you know, you want to be efficient and efficiency really matters. And, and, and sometimes we are creatures of habit. I know I am. I would have papers everywhere 
Does everybody have anybody have papers everywhere? It got to the point where group cruises, I'd be like, oh, I don't know if I want to do that. But, you know, I figure it out anyway. So um, you want to figure out how to get things done in the least amount of time. And one thing about our business, a lot of it is research. But then you think about when you're taking payments, you got to figure out who paid, when they paid. Hold up for one second. Somebody said anything? Okay, my fault. I thought I heard somebody. So you want to figure out who paid, when they got to pay, when they leave, when they coming back. So you, you got to be efficient. You know, you got to be organized. So, you know, um, you, you just given day-to-day things that you may have to deal with, you know, phone calls, emails, texts, staying current on the product and destination news. Because you, you, we know what's going on right now, you know, with the coronavirus, you know, it's, it's, it's beginning to spread like wildfire when it comes to answering these questions from people, but you know, we have to be up on that stuff, right? Um, getting back to people. Does anybody have an efficient way of getting back to their clients? I know we've talked about it in the past. You know, you wanna make sure you qualify that client and you wanna do that effect in an efficient manner too. You know, you don't wanna waste a lot of time with people who kind of dragging their feet. We'll get back with them, okay? So you wanna find ways to maximize your efficiency. And I think that was Nikki. Nikki said she does have a tool that automates her business. And, and me, you know, I, I never thought I would use this when I first saw it, but I use Travel Joy and I'm not selling Travel Joy. So it doesn't matter if you decide to use it. I don't want to sound, you know, like I'm trying to get you to use something that isn't provided by the, whatever company you would. But Travel Joy to me is like my, my efficiency um, tool that I like to use to kind of, you know, get quotes over to people, make sure I stay up on who's leaving and, and just be able to follow up. I think when it comes to efficiency, sometimes we'll get so bogged down in doing one thing that we let the other thing kind of linger. Cause you know, when you send a quote, that's your job's not finished as a travel advisor. When they travel, your job is not finished when they, after they come back off of that trip. I mean, that's if you wanna really maximize that client to the potential of being a future client, um, kind of massaging that client to let them know, hey, you do care, which we do care, but it's very, very easy to look at the next sale because we don't have the efficiency uh, model in place to really cater to everybody in our business. You guys follow me? Denise says Travel Joy works for her as well. Another thing you want to do is catch up on the technology. And technology is changing so much with travel. I mean, I use Denise, for example. Denise posts a lot of stuff, and the stuff is very useful. But if you don't take time to, um, like I said, get the business inside of you and just look at it to have an idea of what's going on, you know, when it comes time to catch up on things, like as far as technology, you're behind. And nothing is wrong with being behind, but the way you want to catch up, it just be learning how to learn. Now, a lot of people that tell me, I don't know how to use a certain tool. And I think, who is that? Yeah, I'm in another group and, and they ask, what's the favorite tool that you use? Does anybody have a favorite tool that they use for their business? Anybody? Yeah, I would say Travel Joy. I would, I would say travel joy as well. Plus, I keep paper, um, paper of everything. So, I use travel joy too, but I also I need to use it more to schedule my task and my follow up. Um, like when even when I just need to send proposals to clients, like set a, a deal in travel joy. I'm a creature of habit and I write it in my planner and I pull it out, even though I have, you know, my phone, I have travel joy, but I will say it's, it's uh, helped a lot, especially like when you're doing group trips, it's just so much easier to set the prices out there and have the group booking page and keep up with the inventory and stuff and not have to keep going back to the site and count who booked what and what you have left. So I love it. And then I also use, it's, it's really not automation, but it helps me keep track of 
everything, like all my receipts and mileage and inventory, I use QuickBooks. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm transitioning to Travel Joy. I use it some, but I need to use it more. Um, and then I'm also looking at uh, Travify for the itineraries to be able to create the it recreate the itineraries. But um, I was in another group today, and somebody was talking about another program to use um, outside of Travify. So I've got to figure out what the name of that one is. But it essentially uh, does the same thing. Well, that's good stuff. Um, it's a creator, um, uh, Ms. Giles. I just started using, I just signed up for the trip creator. That's it. And it's a lot, it's, it's not as expensive as you can do monthly versus doing the annual that Travi, Travify has for. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's the same kind of, kind of um, platform. It's itinerary builder correct mm -hmm. yeah it's yeah. supposed to be an alternative you know another platform for building itineraries and yeah. making them really pretty and things like that yeah i just registered for it i started one but i i, I was trying i was moving too fast so i haven't I, i'm this weekend i want to actually work on one okay let me know how you like it because i need to look i need i'll look at them yeah and good i mean great stuff um i think my favorite tool, this is my favorite tool. My favorite tool is a snippet. I, I love that snippet tool. That snipping tool is like my, I mean, that, that's my thing. Um, another tool I used to use was, um, what is that? What's that one? PowerPoint. I like PowerPoint when it would work. It would, it would let me post the pictures inside a slide and create a nice little clean slide for me. So I can send four pictures on one slide versus sending picture by picture. And another thing that I would I would do if it was working, like say for instance, um, I do a lot of Caribbean. Um, I can save those so when someone asks me for a trip, guess what? I have that stuff already saved. I can save it to a folder, whether that be the Zalara, the Grand, the Jewel Grand, or you know the resorts that I I really want to push them to based upon the incentive, the payout, double room, things of that nature, um, or they or adult only or family friendly, um, it'd be much more efficient if I had that stuff saved already. So all I'm doing is looking for the flight, city you're leaving from, and you know, and the best price versus having to get those pictures sometimes and keep doing the same thing over and over. Um, and Jamal, I just want to, um, you were talking about the snippet tool. I just found out this tonight because I was meeting with my BDM with one of the resorts. For those that have iPhones, um, I just learned this tonight, and I'm pretty tech savvy, but I did not know this, that you can record videos. So I don't know if anybody else doesn't know how to do it, but under your control center, under settings, you go to customize controls, and then there's a recorder screen recording so if there's a video playing you can record that video and then crop it down it saves to your photos and crop it down and then you can share that um, so if you want to give your clients like a video and i'm going to piggyback off of that that's nikki right yes i don't know if it's on androids because both him and i had um iphones and so i was like oh okay so i'm I sure it's it. on there i just don't know yeah, where it's on android yeah we didn't worry about that it's on android <laughs> um, <laughs> but all seriousness, that's the biggest tool we have right there, that smartphone. That smartphone can do everything we just named. It can make pictures, videos. Um, Jolyn mentioned the calendar. I like that she writes things down. I mean, that's a great way because that makes you more intentional. And if you really want to use the technology, you still have that cell phone or some other kind of calendar that you may use. Um, another one we talked about excuse me, we didn't talk about was Canva. Canva is a great tool. You know, and Tasha did an amazing training on Canva. So basically, you know, to sum it all up in a nutshell, you know, we have so many resources at our fingertips and we have to make time to learn. That goes back to the next step that we're going to cover, um, making time to learn. Because, you know, sometimes we come inside the business and it's just speaking from experience. And we see all the income potential. There's so much income potential. 
Um, Maurice, can you hear me, buddy? Are you still in yeah, the sound? Yeah, no, I'm here. I'm sound great. Um, what was the budget that the gentleman said today that kind of blew our, blew, blew our brains off? Uh, 500000 $500,000 for a travel budget. Ladies and gentlemen, we may not get to that $500,000 budget client, but I just want to scratch you to let you know that is out there and it's out there. So we have to take time to learn because, you know, we look at the end, the end goal, but the stuff in the middle matters too, because you're not going to get to the end goal if you don't do the little things in the middle, you know, and it may seem monotonous. Um, see, it feels like it's boring. Anybody would feel like, oh man, they want to do this location again. I, I got to make this, file for this person. But these are the things that sharpen you guys. And you want to be sharp. So when the right person or the people that you really want to be your client, when the CEO or CFO, whoever it may be, come to say, hey, what you got for me? You got the pretty trip creator. You got the video thing on your phone. Whatever tool you may use, guess what? Now you're ready for the right person. So I want you not to look at your business where it's at right now. I want you to look at it where it can be just by sharpening yourself skills that you have. Everybody follow me on that? Because who would love to have a client that tells you I have a $500,000 budget? I'm working on it. I want it my way. And let's think about it. If they got a $500,000 budget, is it safe to say they have some other people that may have some $500,000 budget friends high net worth individuals oh yes and they, and they are out there they are out there and, and and just to go off track you know when i hear things like um why should i use a travel agent and i'm in a group with a bunch of dyers right this is what i want you to think about for the di yeah i'm familiar with mailchimp mailchimp is another um good one that's lynette right but i don't use it but it's a great tool. It's, it's a lot of great tools out there. Um, the DYIers, you know, you, you, am I saying that? Do it yourself. DYI, yep, do it yourself first. When they want to book their own travel, guys, let them. Don't try to compete with a lower price because we're not in a lower price business. I want you to posture up in your business. We're not in a lower price. You're not here to meet or beat their price. You are here to give them a wonderful experience and create something, a nice memory. We're not in the lower price business. If you want lower price, you tell them to get a piece of paper and write down www.expedia booking a trip advisor and leave that person alone. Don't get attached to them trying to book travel with you because what will happen is you chasing that person and guess what? You missing the people who really want your service. People want our service. So let me move on. You know, I get on a mailbox about that. So make time for learning. So the best thing you can do to boost your efficiency is learn. A lot of these tools right here, it's going to take a little bit of time to learn, but that's great. But once you learn it and repetition is the mother of all learning, that's one thing I love about doing quotes. Sometimes I may get somebody who's fishing, but guess what? When I get that person who's fishing, the person coming, jumping already in the boat, want to get caught. Okay. So you want to learn about the product. We got different products right now. Is anybody getting an overload of, of emails from vendors and travel suppliers? Yes. Let me tell you something. I wouldn't spend a lot of time reading over all of that stuff. Pick you a day out of the week or 30 minutes out of your day and, and, and get up to date on that stuff. That's why I left this website up because they kept sending me stuff. I'm like, let me go look. Now, this is my content creator. And when people have questions about things, I can use this as a tool, right? You know, somebody may ask me, what's the best all-inclusive result? <laughs> Let me find out for you. But I'm just giving an example. If they're sending us all the stuff, just pick you a time. You know, use that calendar that Jolyn used. Jolyn has a, a paper calendar. And let me tell you, the paper calendar is the best thing for us. But, you know, we preach as a habit. So you get that paper calendar. You write down, use some time where you can go learn. 
You gotta, I'm telling you, when you sharpen that saw, you cut down that tree so much faster. We have all these meetings. You know, fortunate, fortunately, Atlanta has a lot more than other areas. But don't feel bad because they have webinars. A lot of webinars are recorded. If you can't get to it, if you're at work or you may have other obligations. So make sure you learn, okay? Now, I don't want you to learn and don't do. Don't learn and don't do. That's not good. We want you to learn and do, okay? So, but Jamal, on the on the email, sometimes you have to spot, like I have um, some groups for Carnival and Carnival just sent out an email um, yesterday and it was for Valentine's Day for anybody that's booked or new bookings, um, they would get 20% 20, 20 off of their any um, spa packages and it had the code in there and it also um, you had to you have to book it by the 14th and it's for any cruises good through there's a date of 2021 so sometimes like if you know I, I kind of know which clients I have out there so if certain emails come in from a particular vendor I always kind of stop and look at it to see if it's some type of special promotion that's Nikki right Denise oh hey Denise hey Denise and that's great stuff because now this this is what I want you to think about. If she finds that promotion, right? Any promotion, we'll use that one for example. And she reaches out to that client and shares that with that client. Say if the client wasn't looking to go on carnival, is it safe to say that client may say, I've been meaning to call you? Any is anybody that ever happened to anybody else? Oh yeah. 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 And it was so funny because I posted it in my groups that are on Carnival, but then there's this other girl who we kind of met after she had already booked her group and she had did everything on her own. And she was saying, oh, I wish I would have met you before because I because I really want to use a, um, a travel agent. So they actually leave next month. So I sent it to her and I said, well, you know, um, Carnival is one of my vendors. I know you're using um, using Carnival. Even though you didn't book with me, I want to share this discount with you and you can share with your group. So even though she didn't book with me, I'm using sharing that information with her so her people can get discounts. And then hopefully when she get ready to do her next one, she'll remember that and use me. You know what? That's we need to, that's Denise, right? I get yeah. You. Let's give her a hand because that's a great way to buy real estate in someone's mind about what you do. Because, you know, one of the things we've learned with Dan Chappelle is not the initial person that's going to do business with you a lot of times. It's the people that they know. And if you offer value, I'm going to use that word V. Because you, don't, don't you feel like every sale should be a sale? Does everybody feel like every sale should be a sale? You don't have to say you do. But does anybody feel that way? You mean every sale or every... Every sale. Like, if I meet you, I may be using the wrong word, Denise. Every client should be a sale. Oh, okay. Like, if I give you a quote or you reach out to me, I should be able to close that sale. It's not realistic. <laughs> I don't know if I agree with that 100%. Yeah. It's not. It's not. It, it, but, you know, but sometimes when... I, I give you a, a quote or a proposal or whatever. Sometimes we expect that to transpire into a close. Or if you ask me about a trip, like some, some agents or advisors, they won't give information unless they feel like it's beneficial for them because they want to get your business. What she did was great because that sale, not the sale, but the information she provided to that, but it's going to be a future client. That right there can lead to future business. And I always tell you guys, and I, I tell other people, I don't look at the business that I'm going to get from you right now. I look at the business we're going to get together in the future. Because you know when they post these pics or they come back from their trip, they get excited before they go on their trip. Don't they run their mouth? Yep. And who did that for you? How did you, how did you know about the spa package? Oh, this agent. So now she becomes the subject matter expert. Does anybody remember hearing that word on this on this webinar? The subject matter expert. So she didn't go in for the sale, but sometimes we got to remember that, you know, hey, that small commission, that small commission can be a bigger commission later on if you do the job right. So great job, Denise. 
I, I, I commend you for that. I need to reach out to some of my carnival clients too. But that comes from her having that client, that um that profile database where she know which clients like carnival. That's a good thing. And that's a great way to be efficient and effective in your business. Somebody give her $20. <laughs> Maurice, would you like to add anything? Because I know you have a lot to say about that kind of stuff. No, I mean, yeah, every, 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 uh, just statistically, you know, every, every encounter is not going to be a close. So, but I do go into that, my, you know, I go into the, my approach is that, you know, hopefully I close this particular client. Um, but yeah, I totally agree, man. Totally yeah. agree with, with, with you know. I kind of feel like the clients, they can really work for you, even if that's not someone who booked the trip for me. Because we see it all the time when we get tagged in a lot of these posts when people say, who's a, a travel agent? You know, it's because that person either been looking at you, gave them a quote, and they disappeared, whatever it may be. But I'm telling you, you know, that's great what Denise has done. Because now, just imagine... If she took a Saturday, which is you Saturday, for example, and she had a database already built and called everybody and say, look, they just had a promotion. I thought about you. I know you cruise carnival all the time. So what we're going to do, we're going to get you booked within the next th two or three weeks because they got some great promotions. I'm not looking to go anywhere right now. Well, you know what? If you know anybody else, let me know. And all she did was just pique their interest about a trip. I'm going to do that Saturday. I'm going to call everybody I reached out to. Let's send them a text. That don't take no time to do. So. Yeah, that's true. Any, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Maurice. No, I was just going to say, sometimes we, we, we forget that, you know, we can initiate the interaction as well instead of sitting back and waiting for people to come to us. So that's where you have, like, somebody mentioned MailChimp. MailChimp. So sending out newsletters are, um, I think today, right, we heard that, uh, an advisor, she called, she'll pick five clients and she'll just call them just to see how they're doing, just to, you know, touch bases with them. And usually a certain percentage of that is going to convert into another booking. So, yeah, we have to remember to initiate the contact sometimes. Yeah, because people forget. Y'all know y'all forget. Y'all may tell somebody y'all going to call them back and life happens. You know, you get the frying chicken. Anybody fry chicken in here? Okay, nobody for you. We might and get not assume that everyone, because you know, just because we post on Facebook or on our business page, um, and you just assume that everyone knows that you're an agent, and it's not necessarily true. Like, you know, what happened to me a couple of um, weeks ago, and I had did my group, and someone just now real, and this is a family member just now realizing that I'm a travel agent. And I don't know how she would not know because I know I'm out there. I'm not a secret agent. But just realizing that everyone may not be looking at social media. So you may have to find other ways like MailChimp or any e email distributions that you may want to send out to people because everyone doesn't look at Facebook or the way the algorithms are. They may not see your post. Say that again. That's Nikki, right? Or Denise? Denise. 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 That's Denise. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, she, she's... Absolutely right. You know, people got lives going on, ladies and gentlemen, lives. You know, you may, I, I've done this so many times, and that's when I had to put myself in the mind of a consumer. I know, like, I get stuff, and I just may not get back to it. It's like mail. You, you see it, you be like, I need to open that up. So when they don't reach back out to us, Maurice just said it, you know, agent picks five clients. And, and that's something I'm going to do Saturday. I'm going to pick five clients. And I'm not going to reach out to them and ask them, where your deposit at? Don't, don't do that, okay? Don't say where your deposit at, okay? Don't do that. I'm just going to reach out to them and say, hey, just thought about you. Hope everything is going well. Have a good day. And I'm going to pick five clients that I am going to reach out to and ask for the deposit. I'm not going to say it. Like, I'm just kidding. But you, you get the point I'm trying to make. I'm going to follow up because... Sometimes we want the client to follow back up with us, but we won't initiate the follow up. 
You, nah, it, it doesn't work like that. I'm telling you, people get busy looking at their phone. We was waiting on power. Anybody was waiting on power? I was waiting on power. The Super mm-hmm. Bowl. You know, we get busy doing stuff. So we got to put ourselves in the mind of a client sometimes. But you also got to take that initiation and just go ahead and start doing it yourself. You know what I mean? So it's not busy work. You're trying to figure out what I need to share or what new thing I need to learn. We can p- get get an efficient way to reach out to clients. And it could be one day out the week, two days out the week, or however you want to do it. So another thing that you can do, you know, to make yourself more efficient during wave season, is tap available resources. Guys, social media is a great tool, but sometimes I'm speaking for me on the behalf of myself. If you don't come from behind that computer or that cell phone, and, and, and do other things like networking events. And Maurice, Maurice, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, okay. I'm here. Okay. I know you shared with me some information. I don't know if the class needs to know exactly what it was, but did you go somewhere and just ran into some business off, off the humbug? Uh, which time? <laughs> <laughs> I think you went to a school. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I went to, um, <clears throat> so I went to my, my god sister's son his school i went to you know for like his family they call it family day so you sit in class with him and just a long story short i met the lady who's over the department for travel for the school and we had a conversation and um and now they're going to use me from now on going going forward and they travel international twice a year so you know sometimes you got to Everything is not done. I know we talk about social media a lot, Facebook, Instagram, but um, like Devonda said, opening it up, she does a uh, vendor table. So, you know, Denise was right. Sometimes you got to step behind that, from behind that, that computer screen and go out networking events and whatnot just to, to kind of meet people. And when you network with other business owners, it's cool too because they run into people as well. And, and we have talked about collaborations you know, what Tasha says, she correct collaboration, collabing with the cappers. Tasha, don't don't get hypnotized by all that stuff they be doing. You know that I don't know the name of it. I know they do something. You know they. I try to learn how to do it. But. It's called a shimmy. There you go. Who, who is that? That's Nikki. Right there, right? That is Nikki. Yes, yeah, Nikki knows about the shimmy. So anyway, yes, I do. <laughs> but I'm saying she, 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 she talked to somebody, and. That's networking, you know. Um, take advantage of. I'm gonna tell you something. Someone told me a long time ago when I first came inside the business. Volunteer. Volunteering is a great way to meet people. Now you can't go in there saying it's the Jamal. I do this and I got this and I can send your family. No, you got to be more interested than interesting. You know, you got to listen. And we always talk about you know be a good listener. Let me tell you. Travel is a conversation that can come up so easy. I love it. Oh my gosh. But that's a great way to get more people in your funnel. I like to call it a funnel because they may not be ready to book nothing right now. But these people that you can massage these leads and push them on out, or there can be other people that help you with your business because they know you have that service. You follow what I'm saying? And one thing is tapping into people's uh, database. Um, so I, I had, um, there's like a social group that hangs out out here. So about a couple of weeks ago, um, they did one of the ladies for her birthday. She did a, um, it was a, a tutu. So we all ordered these long tutus on um, from Amazon. And we had, we did a photo shoot and it happened to be her birthday. She turned 45 and I gave her a birthday card from me and my business. Cause I did my bid, did it as my business. And I put $45 basically um, in the card. And she responded with a thank you on Facebook, also plugging my business to her network, posting a copy of me and her in the picture, a copy of my um, website of my business and my Facebook um, Crisis Memories uh, uh, private group. So I wasn't expecting her to do that, but she has a large following. So just by networking with her, even though she's not going on a trip, 
I was able to tap in and, and a lot of her people have joined my, my group now. So sometimes it's just getting to, into somebody else's database also. That's Denise, right? Yeah. So you gave her $45, right? Right, 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 right. I know when, when you look at it that way, you asked me $45. And so far, I got about 100 people that's, that, that's added to my newsletter. So I want y'all to think about that. I teach my little girl this all the time. Money is a seed, <laughs> okay? You know, but we know how to spend it too. So Denise invested in her business. It, it had nothing to do with, I'm going to get something from that. But she used that to give the other young lady something. And she gave it to her with no intention. No intention. Now look what didn't happen. She going to get so busy booking these trips, she going to probably have to give some to me too. And then most people, we spend more than that for advertising. So I was like, hmm, who else birthday coming up that got a large network? Yeah. Great stuff. I mean, Denise giving all the jewels, Nikki, Tasha, Javonda, I appreciate it. Does anybody have anything else to say before we move forward? I was going to say, um, when you were talking about um, kind of going along the lines with that is that this, this is a business of relationships. So say it again, say it again, take, say it again, say it again. This is a business of relationships, knowing your client, qualifying your clients, and then just kind of knowing, you know, you book one trip for them, having that conversation to say like, okay, where else, you know, kind of knowing what their bucket list is. So when you see something, so if you know your client wants to go to Aruba, a vendor just happens to send you some things, Aruba, or you start seeing stuff for Aruba, you reach out and call your client like, hey, you know, what about this? You know, if you see something about Aruba, you can put it on your page and then tag or um, you can call them and, you know, check with them and say like, hey, you know, I saw this came across on Aruba and then also even post it on their page. And saying like, hey, what about a girl's trip or um, a family trip, a family reunion or, you know, to Aruba and put on their page because their network will start seeing it. And they'll be like, oh, well, I want to go. I want to go. So and that's another way, you know, to get other people involved and excited as well. Now, that was Nikki, right? That is correct. <laughs> go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you're right. I was done. Y'all saying this. Yes, yes this is me. She said something very, very important. And I hear this all the time with very successful people. It's about the relationships. It's all about the relationships. And, and just to kind of give you guys a funny story before we closed out, um, I told Maurice this. Um, you could tell we talk a lot. <laughs> but um, a young lady said, hey, I see a lot of people doing this travel thing on their social media. But I'm not giving them my money because I know them. Sometimes your relationships can hurt you. So when people aren't doing business with you that you know, it's okay. That's because they know you sometimes. And sometimes that can be a gift and a curse. But the great thing about our business, you can get to build new relationships. And every, I mean, I hear it all the time, even in the Napoleon Hill stuff I listen to, um, Tony Robbins is all about relationships, 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 cultivating. You heard what I say, cultivating. When you cultivate something, it doesn't just doesn't pop up right away. You got to have business patience. But the great thing about it, you just got to learn how to be real friendly. Not not ungenuine, but you got to be real friendly. You know, wear a smile sometimes. Compliment somebody on something when you when you go out somewhere. You know that sparks up conversation. And hey, I love those shoes. My wife would be honored to let me if I told her where you got those shoes from. So so the woman don't feel like you, you know, trying to say something to her. So, you know, you're trying to be smooth operator, you know, Billy D. Williams or something like that. <laughs> or here, you know, all you want to do is just get in so you have a chance to cultivate that relationship. And you may never see that person again. But if they walk away with something in their hand about what you do. Guess what? You just never know where they may plant that seed for you as well. Does anybody have anything else before we close out? Yeah, Jamal, it's Irvin. How you doing? I'm good, my man. How are you? 
Man, so so this is my day today. I, I'm doing a, a family cruise in December. So the person that put the cruise together, she was supposed to book her family and her mother-in-law and her niece, and she hadn't done it. So I got a call from the sister saying her mother wanted to be on the same flight that she is on. And so they booked everything. They're coming from Newark, New Jersey, flying to Tampa. So she booked everything for her and her daughters, flight included. But I couldn't book the mother through Carnival because her 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 room hadn't been booked yet. So basically I had to put book the mother on the same flight. It's ironic. I called the mother. We talked. I called United and I, I was able to book her and her granddaughter on the same flight with her daughter and even was able to put them on the same role. So just imagine how she's gonna feel when she finds out that she got to fly with her daughter, not through Carnival, but through what I did for her on the same flight going and coming, and they're gonna be able to sit together at the same time. Hey man, you, you, you know what you probably did for them? You probably made their whole trip an experience just because you went out your way to make things happen for them. Let's give him a hand. Jamal, this is uh, Nikki. I just want to say I had a, um, I just got a new client and she called me about two weeks ago and she wanted to do a group trip to, um, and I don't know if I shared this with you all or not, but she wanted to do a group trip. Um, it's her birthday. She's turning 40 and um, she wanted to go to Vegas. And we started asking, like I started asking her questions and things like that. And I was like, well, why do you want to, you know, and I was just like, what do you want to do? And, you know, she gave me some activities and I just asked her, why do you want to go to Vegas? And she said, well, you know, I've never been. And so me and some friends were just talking. And so um, I sent her some quotes. So I told her, what about Cancun? I was like, you know, she's like, well, I wanted to go to Cancun or the Caribbean, but hurricane season, all of that. I was like, well, that's why you get insurance. And so, um, as of right now, we are booking them to go to uh, Dominican Republic. That's what I'm talking about. What are you send them to the Dominican Republic? Um, they're going to the Hyatt Ziba. Even though kids are open there, she figured that uh, they'll still have access to both properties. Um, and then they'll still be able to, and it, you know, shouldn't be as many kids there during that time, but it's still, you know, it's still within her price range. So we're going to get her room upgraded. Uh, and then because all the rooms there are ocean views or oceanfront rooms. So they all have a view of the ocean. I just left my uh, BDM for Playa Resorts a couple of hours ago. And so he went through, you know, the property, showed me his room he stayed in. And it's just beautifully gorgeous there. So I can't wait to go. And I'm, my other group trip, I'm going to use the Hyatt property in um, Jamaica. Is Malik so your BDM? Yes. Okay, yeah, he'll be in Atlanta next week. Next um, week, yes. He sent, he, me a, be there. he sent me a schedule, so if anybody from Atlanta wants his schedule, so you can go meet with him. He's doing two meetings a day um, mm -hmm. at a couple of different spots all across Atlanta. Just uh, reach out to me, and I'll, I'll shoot you his schedule. Yeah, has he posted – well, he sent an email out, and then he also posted – um, on his Facebook page that he was going to be in the area. So he was, uh, cause vacation express was here the other night and I met him then. And then, um, we had a one-on-one -on -one meeting today and it was just, um, he did four meetings between yesterday and today. So I took the last one today and another agent, you know, she got there late, but, um, your relationship with your BDM is going to, what's going to make the difference for a lot of things, for whatever it is that you're trying to do, upgrading your clients, putting those small touches, you know, in their rooms, um, things like that. They, they know who to go to to get it done. And then he already told us, he was like, you know, I do, he covers seven states. So, you know, fam trips, things like that. Y'all are going to know first because you know, you know, you're right here. So if you're actively booking the resort and they're actively seeing your name all the time or you're reaching out to them uh, for your clients and booking your clients, they're going to know you. 
and they're going to, oh, you're always going to come to mind. Oh, let me call so-and-so. I know I'm going to Atlanta. Let me call these people. I know I'm going to Memphis. Let me call her. I know I'm going to um, Orangeburg or I'm going to, or Columbia, this city, this city. They know who their people are. And that's what you want. You want your name to come out of your BDM's mouth. That's what you want. Anyone else? Hi, Jamal. This is Alisa. Can you hear me? Hey, Alisa. How you doing, lady? Tired, wonderful, and ready to go to bed. But I just wanted to say, um, tonight was amazing, 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 amazing. First of all, shouts out to Tasha. When I saw that post this morning, I was so excited. I was like, yes, yeah, she's posting travel again. So kudos to Tasha. Keep up the good work. Keep posting about your business. I love to see that. I just want to say, um, building those relationships is indeed important. When, as you meet strangers, um, definitely the best contact, of course, a lot of people would say probably phone numbers, but I like to say social media if they have it, especially Facebook, simply because when I send messages, I want to make sure that you got my message. And if I see your head drop, at least I know that you have peeked at it or something. Sometimes with a text message or with an email, depending on how you send it, you can never tell. So as you're meeting strangers, kind of keep that in mind as well. Um, I rarely ever give a stranger my business card when I first meet them, simply because nine times out of 10, it may end up on the trash in the floor or somewhere else versus where it needs to go or just lost, you know, say in a female's purse or something. I like to do that, that social media exchange because that's better because nine times out of 10, they're what? On social media, at least a couple of times out the week. So that's very important. Um, as far as this week, it's, it's been a crazy busy, Jamal, to the point where I am falling asleep at the laptop at night and waking up at 3, 4 in the morning. I have to get up at 5.30. So that's how busy it's been, which is a good problem to have. But um, definitely keep meeting people. I wish I can get to some of these networking events. But as you know, these two people that are six feet tall plus got me tied down to sports. But I will say I am working the sports. No other. Somebody at the game last night tapped me and said, I know you're still in the travel business. And we talked, and she's interested. But she wants me to book um, a group of 20 ladies going to Aruba in December. So I'm currently working on that for her. So that's all I have for tonight, Jim. Hey, thank you, Alyssa. We appreciate that. 20 people going to Aruba. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I received an invite to a vendor deal here in the stockyards of Fort Worth. It was for Scottsdale, Arizona. And I went and I met a bunch of other agents, you know, from other deals. And I just, I guess I kept my posture or whatever, because they were all like, we're with Gulliver Travels, blah, blah, blah. What host are you with? And I said, well, I was with the host, but I'm independent. And they all like they're Jaws just dropped out, whatever. But my whole deal was I sat next to the presenter and the person that invited me, and we just engaged in conversation the whole time. Like after she got through talking, she sat down to eat her dinner, and it was like a uh, whatever you wanted, you could have at the dinner or whatever. They didn't have a set menu or anything, and um, it was it was just a nice time. So I told her, I said I look forward to uh, visiting there even though I didn't win one of the trips, but I, she said, oh, I'll let you know when we're back in the area. So I thought that was just, it was outside of the box, but they, she was naming stuff like they have spas. I knew they had spas in Scottsdale, Arizona, but she was talking about like the wine, wine country and different things. So they just highlighted that in a few key resorts and it was short and sweet. Congratulations. Hey, Jamal, sorry, I had one other thing. Um, a good friend of mine reached out to me, and we spoke my for quite a minute now, but she reached out to me about So I recently got out of the 20th anniversary, uh, and she me like five or six different places she wants to look into, of course, to invite guests. I'm helping her narrow that down, and one of her places on there was Bora. And I actually picked up on and called me, girl, do you realize you said bore, bore with 75 people? Now, most people's budget is not bore, bore. We can make it happen. However, you know, kind of look at your guest list to see, do you really want to do bore, bore? Or do you want to do what's more convenient for your guests? 
because if you want your family and friends at your renewal, you want to make sure that you're easy on their pockets. And she understood it because it's going to be August 2021, the same month as my other vow renewal that I mentioned last week. And that's also back to school. You know, we spend that money. The kids going back to school from head to toe. So I kind of put that in her ear. And she's like, oh, yeah, you're right. So we went from board board to looking at perhaps Thailand. Um, she also considered Aruba, Cancun, a little more other places that were a little more friendly for kids. So um, that's another one. And something else that I do for my current clients, and this may be overboard for a few people, but on their actual birthday, I send them a personalized message, of course. And um, in that message, I say nothing about travel whatsoever. And even to my clients who have not, you know, booked with me recently, or let's just say somebody reached out to me and they did not book with me, they went and ghost or whatever, because we all have those people too. I still reach out to them on their birthday and wish them a birthday. And I did that just yesterday and a guy said, oh my gosh, I've been meaning to contact you. I'm so sorry. Please charge it to my mind and not my heart. But we're ready to put down those deposits. So reach it out just because it definitely works. That's all, Jamal. Well, good stuff, good stuff. I want to thank everybody for tuning in and showing up for your own success. And uh, we're going to keep doing this every week. And if there's some topics that you guys want to talk about, you know, let us know. Because it's not about what we um, want to share. It's about what we all want to learn. So um, I'll have the recording up probably tomorrow. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Y'all have a wonderful night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs>